Elm is strictly typed and a sound type system, which means that when you're getting outside data into Elm, it's literally impossible to screw it up, which means it's also brutal <laughs> if you don't get it quite right. And if you know anything about users or even developers or Q quality engineers, QA, it is really easy to screw up number parsing. There's just so many things that can go wrong. So we're gonna case each one of these and show you how, how easy it is to mess up. So first message we gotta deal with is when you're typing in the Fahrenheit field, you're gonna get some kind of user input, right? That's a string, and we know this, this is a string that is whatever you type. It could be the three, the two, the cow emoji, who knows? And we got the same thing with the Celsius. So for now, we're, we'll do nothing. We'll just assume that if you type everything's, you know, no, nothing changes about your model. We're not changing any data. We just wanna play around with this, these parsing algorithms here and see how things go. And what we're interested in is converting first off this thing to a float. And if you don't know how that, like what Elm offers to parse things, if you go to the Elm Lang org, hit docs, and then click package docs, all the good basic stuff's in Elm core. So if you click Elm core, if you don't know what to look for, you can just type in string here and it'll filter it. String has a from float. So if you type in a float in there, it'll convert it to a string. And there's also a to float. So if you have a string that somebody typed, you can convert it to a float. But because there's no guarantee that what they typed was a float, it could be a cow emoji, a blank string, who knows, then it'll give you a nothing. So it actually gives you a maybe back. And a maybe is very, it's like a data type that basically means it's either there or it's not. And there's nothing wrong if it's not there. There's nothing wrong with blank strings. There's nothing wrong with the user typing a cow emoji. But it basically means, look, like we tried to convert this to a float, but it's not what we expected. So we're, we're not gonna give you anything back. So rather than a result that's an error, it could be intentional by the user, who knows? Which means we have two options here. So we're gonna case on that user, in, that user input and say, look, if we do a string to float of that user input, what do we get? Do we get nothing because it's a cow emoji? Fine, we'll return the model back. But what if we get a number, right? We get some kind of number here then cool, we'll return the model back, but let's at least log what we got here. So we'll say, let message two debug log. No clue what this is, bruh. And we'll just log it out. But if we got a number back, oh, I gotta put the in there, my bad. Message three, debug log. Got a number, nice. And we'll put the number there, go to compile. Now when we type in 32 in your debug output, we should see the logs of, got a number nice, three and 32. Now it looks like an integer, but it actually has a float behind the scenes. The logs are just removing the decimal for us. So that's nice, it actually parsed a number. But if we type in, let's say C, what, what does that mean? No clue what this is. It doesn't know that's a flow. Is that a zero? Is it empty string zero? Versus if we actually typed zero, right? Then it knows what zero is. So that way we can match on, all right, first off, did the user give us a number or not? If we can work with numbers, cool. From numbers, we can start parsing that to Fahrenheit and Celsius and back and forth, but we can't do anything with cow or empty string, right? So that's how you do the basics of seeing what you typed, converting it to a float, nice and safe, right? No runtime exception for bad parsing. And then once we had a number, we can start doing the actual math to convert it back to Celsius.